got on the phone with me today spiritual mentor and alignment teacher Samantha Nolan-Smith. Samantha produces a weekly TV show called The Spiritual Feminist and is founder of The Freedom Collective, which is an online membership club for people who want to learn more spiritual tools to experience more happiness in their everyday life. So today Samantha is going to discuss with us consciousness and how we can bring it into our everyday lives. Welcome to Simply Wellbeing, Samantha. Thanks. Thanks very much, Bryony. What exactly is an alignment teacher? Yeah, it's not exactly something something that you know my school counselor came out with let's put it that way <laughs> uh, it's i i use that terminology because i think it's probably the most accurate way of describing what i do which is to help people to come back into a space where both their minds their hearts their souls their intuition are all functioning together and moving in the same direction mm. and the problem of course is that that's that's often not the case. So, so what's often happening is our heart saying one thing. Our heart saying, let's say, I really want to be a, a writer or a photographer, and our minds picked up a whole lot, a whole lot of stories from, say, our parents and, and teachers and so forth, which says that's not a sensible way to live. You're never going to make any money out of that. Blah yeah. blah blah. When I'm not good enough. All exactly. Those, yeah. Exactly. And so we get what I call out of alignment and. And part of ourselves is, is pushing in one direction or wanting to move in one direction. And another part of ourselves is saying, no, 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 that's not going to happen. Mm. And so what my job is, is to help people to come back into a space of working out, of, of aligning those things. And generally that looks like dropping a whole lot of the stories that we've picked up along the way from, as I said, many experiences from our past. And those stories often really limit us and keep us kind of playing small when if we learn to sit in ourselves and listen to our hearts and to trust our intuition, mm. then we, we come into playing a bigger game, let's call it that way, because the, the soul isn't afraid, the heart isn't afraid, the mind is the thing that's that's fearful. So it's about aligning your, you know, I suppose that gut instinct or, your, or what you feel in your body with your mind. Is that exactly, yeah. exactly? And then you don't end up with, you know, you don't end up with the levels of stress, the anxiety, the disappointment that we find when we're pursuing a path in life that really isn't isn't in our highest and best interest. Mm. Well, I know it's 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 funny. So many of us are in such conflicts with our minds because we're always thinking, "Well, I should do this and I should do that, and I should be this type of person." And you know, our bodies are telling us something else. Absolutely, and the shoulds are actually one of the things that I speak a lot about, and I call those the red flags. Because any time I hear myself, or or when I'm working with other people, I hear them say, "I should be doing this, I should be doing that." It's pretty much an indicator that I'm starting to relive somebody else's story of what my life should look like mm. which which is telling me i'm not really listening to my own truth i'm listening i'm 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 trying to live up to other people's expectations rather than connecting in with what's really true for me because the heart doesn't say should the heart says what can what's possible mm. well what, today we're going to actually be discussing consciousness and can you tell me what exactly does it mean to become more <laughs> conscious it's a funny thing isn't it, it sounds mm. like mm. uh it's so for me, I can speak from my own experience and, and I guess the most practical way to describe it is before being more aware and more conscious, I, I kind of went through life like we have just spoken about in a way of listening to other people's opinions about what my life should be like, mm. having some sense of, well, I should do this and I should do that and living like that, not really reflecting on what was what was best for me, but also not even being aware of a level of dissatisfaction or fear and therefore at the, that was kind of right underneath the surface that I was pushing down through a whole lot of things from being really, really busy to drinking too much alcohol to getting really stressed out and trying to kind of control the environment in which I live. Mm. And, and then from that, really, that is an unsustainable way of living, despite the fact that's the way that so many of us live. Yeah. And for me, that led to a number of things, me moving into areas like yoga and like doing other other healing modalities to, because I had I got to this point where I was like, I'm just, I know that there's an unhappiness here that's not natural. It feels natural because it's been around for a long time. And it wasn't like I wasn't also having fun. Of course, there were 
you know, many moments of fun and, and joy. Yeah. But, uh, but there was something just underneath it all which was saying there's more, there's more. Yeah. And so I took this journey and the awakening process was really one of recognizing, oh, I'm not just my thoughts. Oh, I'm not just my body. Oh, mm. I'm more than all of that. And this thing that is more than all of that is the essence of me. It's not just a part of me. It is the thing in which all the rest of it, my identity, my body, my house, my relationships, all reside. And so I think of it now or explain it as as the field in which we all operate. So perhaps you've spoken about, you know, the field of energy in which everything kind of pops up and manifests in the in the material world and really consciousness or the the awakening process is one of recognizing well that is the source of it all mm. it's and that oh, sorry go ahead well, it's kind of waking up isn't it because we it's like absolutely. you say with the alcohol or whatever it is we're in some ways we're just trying to block what what it is that we're really meant to be waking up to Yes, absolutely. We're doing it all over the place from numbing out in front of the television for hours at a time to drugs, alcohol, shopping addictions, gambling addictions, the whole lot. Because there's this deep sadness in, in us, in those of us who have not yet woken up mm. to this longing to be connected, this longing for the connection, which is the thing that we know really at our core is the truth of ourselves. And, and because we come into the the human experience and we kind of forget the origins of ourselves we feel disconnected we feel separate and there's a sadness that that sits with that separateness and the awakening process is the recognition of the lie of the separation Mm. and so how can a person bring more consciousness into their everyday lives there are many kind of tools and techniques and i'm more than happy to speak about any of those but i'd say that what sits beneath each of those is the willingness to be still. Mm. And that sounds, on the one hand, sounds really easy, and on the other hand, is, is terribly It's really hard for, for <laughs> lots of people, really hard. Yeah, <laughs> because of this kind of obsession that we have with the mind, mm. and the mind really is so dominant now in, in Western societies particularly, and we've come to almost idolise the mind. And we're all living in these kind of mini dictatorships where the mind is telling the body what to do and is ignoring it when it's tired and it's telling it to push through and it's telling it to keep going and mm. and so forth. And it's doing the same with the soul and it's kind of squashing it or even refusing to acknowledge its existence. And so the quietness, the stillness can be difficult because the mind is very, very busy and it, it has so many thoughts per second and it, the stillness comes from not pushing away all of those thoughts because that's like, you know, holding up a piece of cardboard to the ocean. It's just not going to work. Mm. But to recognizing, okay, there are thoughts, but there's something that's separate from those thoughts. And if I can bring my attention, not to the thoughts, but to that which exists underneath the thoughts, let's say, mm. then, then that's where stillness resides because that place is eternally still. And so the first step, for me was really coming to the breath and that was really a teaching that I got from yoga because yogis for, for centuries now have said well we recognize that this there's this what's called in yoga chitta vritti the the activity of the mind that's causing us some problems <laughs> mm. and and we want to become still and so the yogis were very are very have always been very practical beings and said well what if we got that we could focus on instead of the mind oh we've got the breath everybody's got the breath and the breath carries consciousness and so if you're asked to just be still and not think of anything you can bet you can bet yourself that that just thought after thought is just going to start you know going through your mind and you're going to give up in about two minutes and go that's just too hard but if instead you're asked don't worry about your thoughts just come to the breath and focus on the breath then that gives you gives you something to focus on and you'll find that in time as you just observe the movement of the breath there'll be first of all short periods and then longer and longer periods of oh i wasn't i wasn't victim to or subject to my thoughts i was just still with my breath so the more and more we practice this like you say the the it's we're training our brains aren't we it's easier to, to, to reach that place more and so mindfulness and meditation 
you know, like you say, is such an important way to become more conscious. And we're, we're actually running out of time today because I could talk about this topic with you. <laughs> Obviously, you can um, for, for hours. So if people want to find out more information um, about you and your online membership, because it's a bit like a spiritual membership, isn't it? Like a gym, but helping That's people right. become yeah. more conscious. And you've got your TV show that you've got on YouTube and on your website. Where can they find more information on it? If they pop over to samantanolensmith.com, they'll everything you, you can kind of be sent out from there to the various bits and pieces that I get involved in.